We're going to talk a lot about the uh, Amazon in the next 20 minutes or so here on France 24. A lot more coming up in perspective, so stay with us for that. But Dick T is uh, also talking about the Amazon. This is devastating fires, though, that are hitting them. Yeah, that's right, Stuart. It's actually on the front page of uh, Liberation, the French paper today, uh, talking about these devastating fires and um, uh, historic droughts that have been ravaging the Amazon rainforest for weeks and months. It's actually suffering its worst drought in in several decades. Uh, that's actually what the pr Brazilian president Lula said as he flew over the ravaged areas yesterday in a visit. Um, the planet's lungs, as it's known, um, uh, has had historic levels of drought, high temperatures, and uh, climate change experts are now worried that that uh, that uh, that the dreaded point of no return could come earlier than expected. And in its coverage today, Liberation is looking at the impact that uh, this is having, um, explaining that rains are expected for uh, next month, but that the Amazonian basin has been at historically dry levels for the past year. Uh, certain experts are pointing the finger at former President uh, Jair Bolsonaro, who really opened up a lot of that land for, uh, for deforestation for agricultural purposes. The impact has been terrible. Um, isolated villages becoming vulnerable, flora and fauna threatened. And, you know, the rainforest absorbs one quarter of the world's CO2 emissions and, and uh, expels oxygen. That's why it's called the lungs of the planet. Uh, as Liberation says, the Amazon is burning and we really must not turn a blind eye to it. And to just give you an idea of, uh, of what that looks like, this is from the Philippine Daily Inquirer from uh, their coverage today. This is uh, a picture here uh, showing the dried up crossing between Parisinho, which is known as a little paradise to the bigger city of Humaito. In normal times, that crossing is a short walk along the beach. Uh, it's completely different now. It looks uh, almost desert-like, as you see in those images there. Yeah, I assume the Brazilian papers are talking about this as well, Dipti. Yeah, absolutely. You have a lot of different um, uh, different perspectives. So this is from um, uh, Foia de Sao Paulo, uh, this uh, writer here talking about dystopia. And uh, really uh, saying that, you know, uh, some people have even compared the skies in Sao Paulo to uh, that of L.A. In, in the book Blade Runner, except that the book was set in, the, in 2019, which is now behind us. So that's in the past. And it would make sense that this topic works uh, usually serve to help us anticipate a disastrous future and correct our course of action. However, uh, this writer says no, because we as humanity are simply incorrigible. You have another um, article uh, from um, Foya de Sao Paulo, another perspective. Uh, this opinion writer here, a little bit more optimistic, noting that under the presidency of Lula, uh, there has been a desire to address climate change. Um, the writer reminding us that he's promised to create a climate authority and a climate emergency statute. At the same time, his government is also planning to build a highway and explore oil through the Amazon. So despite these uh, ambiguous signs, pa the path is certainly outlined for Brazil uh, to lead the, the fight against climate change. Back to France uh, for this next one. The story of uh, two French rugby players who were accused of gang raping a woman while on tour in Argentina. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's a story that really shocked uh, France when it came out a few months ago. Uh, it's in uh, the French uh, paper Le Figaro today. A woman uh, in Argentina accused two players, Hugo Oradou and Oscar Jegu, of abusing her and keeping her against her will. They admitted to uh, having sex with her but insisted it was consensual. This all taking place in a hotel uh, while they were on tour with the na French uh, national rugby team. Now, the two players were allowed to return to France earlier this month. An Argentine judge will deliberate in the coming days on whether or not the charges will be dropped. And that's why Le Figaro is sort of using this um, occasion to kind of go back on that story. The plaintiff's testimony will also be the focus of a documentary that's airing here in France this Thursday. In this article, Le Figaro also takes us back on uh, the how this story was on how this how the legal teams of both sides uh, tried to defend their respective um, plaintiff and defendants. The defense says the plaintiff's team instrumentalized the media to relay details of her ordeal and sway opinion. The plaintiff's legal team, meanwhile, accuses the French Rugby Federation of pouring money to prove the innocence of their players. And if he's going to end on something a little bit lighter for us, is the uh, hotel booking website, Hotels.com, releasing 
a list of the most outrageous things people have actually forgotten. They've left them behind when checking out. Well, it's <laughs> happened to all of us, hasn't it, Stuart? You know, that mad dash to get out before checkout, uh, you know, and maybe you leave, you know, I don't know, a pen or you leave a T-shirt, but some people leave crazy things behind, uh, like a Birkin bag, uh, a Rolex, and there's actually a list on Quartz uh, of that. Uh, you have a vacuum cleaner, um, uh, a chick and a lizard. Both animals were returned rightfully to their owners. Two full leg casts, a rice cooker, a blender, uh, not to mention construction pipes and a car tire, rather inexplicably. Um, the survey also compiled the craziest requests by deep-pocketed guests, including a hot dog with caviar and a bathtub full of Evian water. No, that's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Yeah, I my agree. father and I left a suit behind, but that's a bit boring in comparison. <laughs> <laughs> to car tires. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks a lot, Ditsy. Ditsy, uh, with the papers here on France 24.